हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर हिमांशु सिंह फ्रॉम ऑल इंडिया इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल साइंसेज न्यू डेली टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन मॉड्यूल इंट्रोडक्शन टू पर्ल फ्रॉम पेपर बाय इन्फॉर्मेटिक्स ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द मॉड्यूल्स आर टू गिव अ जनरल आइडिया अबाउट पर्ल प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज लाइक वाई इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट टू लर्न वेर वी कैन डाउनलोड इट हाउ टू इंस्टॉल इट एट्सेट्रा we will discuss about data types of the scripting language including scalar array hashes after that we will see how to write basic perl script how does it work and we will also discuss about some basic perl functions at last web resources of freely available perl modules along with their utilization will also be summarized why perl perl stands for perl extraction and report language comparatively it is very easy to learn and use unlike other programming languages it is loosely typed even we do not need to specify type of data while scripting the perl interpreter chooses the types based on the context of data itself perl is good for string manipulation and operations on files majority of data present in the biological world are in the form of string therefore Perl has become one of the crucial programming languages involved in the development of bioinformatics tools. Perl installer is freely available to all operating systems such as Linux, Mac, Windows, etc. Perl is pre-included in Linux and Mac. However, in Windows it is needed to be installed. It can be freely obtained from website perl.org where two Perl installers have been deposited namely Strawberry Perl and Active State Perl. in this module we will be working with active state perl on windows platform after clicking on active state perl we will be directed to download page where we can download perl installer as per the configuration of our system x86 installer should be downloaded for 32 bit operating systems and x64 for 64 bit operating systems and install the perl For this module we have installed 64 bit operating system perl interpreter perl runs on command line interface therefore to check whether the perl is installed or not we need to open the command prompt to open the command prompt first we click on the windows start button then type cmd in the search box and press enter the command prompt will be opened then to check the status of the perl we need to type the command perl minus v here perl is written to call the perl interpreter and minus v switch is used to instruct interpreter to provide information about version of the perl after pressing enter the information about perl appears on the screen if there is no such message appears at the command prompt then it means that perl is not installed properly in the operating system then we need to again install perl perl help system perl documentation or help utility is also included with itself to get information about perl or its associated functions we do not need to search for any other resources we can get it all the related information and help from the command prompt itself in perl the function perl doc is inbuilt for this task for example suppose we want to know what is perl in this case we need to just type perl doc in perl command prompt and then it will display all information related to the function at the cmd screen like this before starting our first program we need to know few important points about perl we need a text editor to write the program for example notepad notepad++ gedit etc in this module we will be using notepad++ in perl the file extension used in perl scripting is .pl we need to write our program in text editor and save it with .pl extension now we will write our first program to avoid confusion we will create a folder on desktop dedicated to the perl scripts and keep all the related files in it at first we make a folder at desktop and name it for example perl then 
Open the text editor by clicking in Windows Start button, typing Notepad in search box and press Enter. When the Notepad is opened, we can write our first program. For example, hash exclamation, then path of the Perl installer. However, it is optional in Windows. First line of the program is SH bank or hash bank line, which starts with the hash and exclamation and points to the path of the Perl interpreter. In this script, we have included two pragmas, strict and warnings, that is loaded using use function. Warning pragma tells about typing error such as missing semicolon, missing inverted commas, etc. On the other hand, a strict pragma used when strict or explicit Perl coding is required, it forces Perl for a specific declaration of variables. Perl interpreter ignores lines start with hash symbol. Therefore, for future use, purpose of the program can be defined in the script using hash. Here we have mentioned the purpose as my first program. Last line of the program uses print function, which is used to print the statement. Hello, welcome to the Perl world at the command prompt. Here, slash n is new line character, which is used to print message from the new line. Semicolon is a delimiter used in the Perl scripting. After completion of writing of the script, we need to save the file with .pl extension. Here we have saved the script file as first underscore program dot pl in the Perl folder like this. To run Perl script first underscore program, we need to go to the Perl script folder on the desktop by using command prompt. Here by default current working directory is Lenovo folder which is mentioned before the greater than symbol in the command prompt. To go to the Perl folder, first we need to know the path of the Perl script. To know the path of the Perl script, first open the Perl folder at the desktop. After opening the folder, copy the path of the folder like this. Then either paste or type the path of a script at the command prompt followed by cd command. cd is a windows command to change the directory or folder location. And further. The current working directory can be seen at the command prompt. Now we can run the Perl script by typing Perl space program name dot pl. Here the program name is first underscore program dot pl and then press enter. And the output is hello, welcome to the program. Perl data types. Like other programming languages, Perl knows about different varieties of data. Perl has three basic data types, scalars, array of scalars, and hashes of scalars. Scalars are variables which can be either a number, a string, or a reference or address of a variable. They always preceded by a dollar sign. For example, here scalar dollar age is equal to 21, which is integer value. Dollar name is John, which is string. And the third scalar is dollar marks, which is a float value. It is important to note that strings, which is a sequence of characters, will always be mentioned within the inverted comma. The script is saved in the scalar underscore program dot pl file. To see the output of the program, we need to type Perl space scalar underscore program dot pl and press enter. Then we get the output as age equal to 21, name equal to John, marks equal to 75.60. An array is a variable that stores an ordered list of scalar values. Array variables are preceded by an add sign. To refer to a single element of an array, we need to use the dollar sign with the variable name followed by the index of the element in square brackets. Here, two arrays have been created. First, array with integer literals or values and second, string literals or values. Both arrays have similar number of elements that is 3. So indexing will be 0, 1 and 2. To print a specific element of array marks, 
we need to write dollar array name with index in bracket. In this case, to print first element of the marks array, we need to write dollar marks one, etc. Similarly, other element can also be accessed. The output of the program will be marks zero equal to sixty five, marks one equal to seventy, etc. Perl provides a number of useful functions to add and remove elements in an array. For example, push function. It pushes the value of the list onto the end of the array. Syntax is push at array list. Here, list is element which is to be added in the array. Pop function. It pops off and return the last value of the array. And the syntax is pop at the rate array. Third function is shift. Shift function shifts the first value of the array off and return it, and it shortens the array by one and moving everything down. Syntax is shift at array. To prepend the list in front of the array, we uses unshift function. It returns the number of element in a new array, whose syntax is unshift at array. comma list here list is the element which is to be added in the array a hash is a set of key values pairs hash variables are preceded by a percent sign to refer to a single element of a hash you will use the hash variable name preceded by a dollar sign and followed by the key associated with the value in the curly brackets therefore it is also called hashes of scalars hashes are created in one of two following ways in first method we can assign a value to a named key on one by one basis for example dollar data seek1 equal to 45 it is the first element of the hash then second element can be assigned as dollar data seek2 equal to 30 and third will be dollar data seek3 equal to 40 in the second case we use a list which is converted by taking individual pair from the list the first element of the pair is used as the key and the second as the value for example percent data equal to seek1 comma 45 seek2 comma 30 seek3 comma 40 for clarity we can also use equal to greater than sign as an alias for comma to indicate key value pairs which is as follows dollar data equal to seek1 equal to greater than 45 comma seek2 equal to greater than 30 comma seek3 equal to greater than 40 file handles file handles are normal utility of perl which is used to perform variety of operations on files such as read write edit etc there are mainly three file handles in perl first stdin which represents standard input second stdout standard output and third stderr which shows standard error file can be opened by this syntax open fh file.txt or die cannot open file.txt in this line we open the file.txt using file handle fh and if the file does not exist or some error is there it will show the message that cannot open file.txt the opened file will be stored in the array file using the input operator and the syntax is at the rate file equal to fh and after storing the file the file handle is closed using close fh syntax so this file handle could be utilized in the same program for further use if it is required here fh is file handle the name of the file handle can be anything for example stdin data file etc to open file.txt in read only mode syntax is open fh less than file.txt here less than sign indicates that file has to be opened in read only mode here we can only read the file content but cannot edit anything 
to open file in writing mode greater than sign will be used. Rest of the syntax is similar as above. For example, open fh greater than file.txt. It gives liberty to edit the file. Perl conditional statements help in decision making, which require that the programmer specifies one or more conditions to be evaluated or tested by the program along with the statements to be executed if the condition is determined to be true and optionally other statement to be executed if the condition is determined to be false. Perl facilitates several conditional statements to deal with decision making problems. For example, if statement, if else statement, if else if else statement, etc. If statement. In if statement, the code will be executed only if the condition is true. Otherwise, the code will be terminated. The basic structure of the if statement is if under bracket condition which can be expression and in curly bracket statements are there. Second statement is conditional statement is if else statement. In if else statement we can execute statements on the basis of two conditions whether the condition is true or the condition is false. If the condition is true it can execute the first statements otherwise it will execute second statements which comes under else. The basic structure of if else statement is if under bracket condition which might be expression and in curly braces statements after curly braces else then under curly braces statements will be there here if the condition is true it will execute statements under the if otherwise it will print statements comes under else third conditional statements is if else if else statement in if else if else statement we can execute statements on the basis of several conditions it will check all the conditions and execute the program where it finds the condition is true the basic structure of the if else if statement is if under bracket condition which can be expression also and in curly braces statements after curly braces else if will be there then under curly braces conditions will be there according to the next condition and this else if statements can be used several times as per the requirement of the program and at last the else will be there and after that in curly braces statements can be written if all the conditions defined by the programmer will be false in that condition only the else statement will be executed programming loops in programming sometimes we need to execute a piece of code a block of code several number of times sequentially like other programming languages Perl also provides several loop statements which allow us to execute a statement or group of statements multiple times till the specified condition in the program is true. Some of the programming loops are while loop, for loop, for each loop, etc. While loop. While loop repeats a statement while a given condition is true. It tests the condition before executing the loop of the body, loop body. For loop. For loop executes a sequence of statements multiple times and abbreviates the code that manages the loop variable. Third loop is for each loop. The for each loop iterates over normal list value and sets the variable var to each element in the list in turn. The last loop that is do while loop, it is like a while statement except that it tests the condition at the end of the loop body. Here we take example of while loop. While loop statement in Perl can repeatedly executes specified statements as long as the condition is true in the program. 
here statements may be a single statement or a group of or block of statements the condition may be any expression the loop iterates while the condition is true when the condition become false perl program pauses the line immediately following the loop of or terminate the program the basic structure of while loop is while in bracket again it can have expression followed by curly braces with block of statement which will only execute several times if the condition is true perl modules are reusable package defined in perl library file to load these packages two functions are there in perl namely require and use they search the module in inc array of the perl library if it is not available gives error message so before loading the perl module we need to install perl module in perl library that will be discussed in coming slide to load the modules both require and use function calls eval function of perl library to process the code most of the perl packages are available at cpan which stands for comprehensive perl archive network perl modules can be installed by two ways first by downloaded file or second by cpan utility to install perl module by downloaded file first we need to download a perl module from web resources such as cpan which is comprehensive perl archive network where perl modules are deposited in the form of tar file to install perl module we need to first extract the tar file in computer and go to the module folder by command by windows command cd to install perl module we need to first extract the tar file in computer and go to the module folder by using windows command cd here for example cd person and after going to the module folder we need to run following commands in the module folder there will be one perl file that is makefile.pl to run this pl file we need to type command in the command prompt perl space makefile.pl after that we need to type second command make and to install at last we need to type command make space install perl also gives facility to install packages online for this purpose cpan utility is there in perl to install the perl module from cpan utility first we need to open command prompt and we need to follow two following steps step 1 that is we need to type in the command prompt cpan and then enter after entering then the cpan will be called and message will be appeared at the command prompt screen which can be seen as cpan before the greater than sign at the command prompt and the second step is we just need to type install space and the module name for example install space bioper which is a module name then the installation will be started and it will download all the necessary files from the internet and complete the installation to load the perl module perl has given two inbuilt functions which are require and use the syntax of the function are for require it is require space and the package name here it is foo and to access the function of the package we need to write package name then the colon then the object name or the function name of the module for example foo colon bar or foo colon black similarly use function also work in loading perl modules the syntax of the program is use foo here also to access the function of the module we need to type 
the same Perl package colon then the object or function name. So students, let's now summarize what we learned in this module. Perl is easy to use. Basically, we need to just write the program in text editor, save it with the .pl extension and run it. There is no need to compile the program like other programming languages. Perl has inbuilt help utility with its installation and that utility is named Perl doc. Therefore, we do not need to go to any other online resources or other resources to know about a specific function of the Perl. Perl has three basic data types like scalars, array, hashes. Scalars can be either string, can be uh, string, can be references. To specify one or more conditions, Perl has conditional statements such as if else, if statement, if else if else statement, unless statements and many others. To execute a statement or group of statements for multiple times, Perl also facilitate loop statements. Some of them are while loop, for loop, for each loop, etc. Other than that, Perl also provides a collection of modules which has been deposited at public domain which are free to use. For example, BioPerl, which has been developed and shared as open source, which can be utilized for several biological interpretations. Thank you.